We wanted to pick your front office brain, though, to evaluate a few potential trade destinations for Chris Paul. We all believe he is going to be on the move prior to next season, so we're going to give you a few potential deals, courtesy of our friend Tim Bontemps. Tim cooked all these up on the trade machine, and we want to ask you about the potential fit for CP. At the end, Amin is going to rank all the teams for us as well. So first up, the New York Knicks. Amin, your childhood team, you worked for this team. Fizz, you coach for this team. And here is what it would look like with Chris Paul playing for this team. Our Tim Bontemps provided this potential trade. Because the Knicks have so much cap space available, they could send Dennis Smith Jr. to the Thunder and just absorb Paul's contract. That's that simple. So, I mean, what do you think about his potential fit with the Knicks? Awful fit. Awful <laughs> fit on so many levels. Number one, the Knicks' whole thing uh, in the summer of 2019 was, we missed out, but guess what? 2021, big free agents on the way. Let's keep that flexibility. So every deal they signed was like a two-year deal or a one-year deal. By doing this deal, they would basically say, you know what, never mind on 2021. I mean, it and, is a whole new front office, though, I mean. I know, I get it, but I think that the plan, even though we may not agree what they did in the short term, in the long term, the idea of kicking the, the, the ball ahead to 2021, that's something that we can get on board with. And when you talk about Chris Paul at his age and that salary over the last couple of years of his deal, it just doesn't fit up with the timeline that Knicks are on. And then from Chris Paul's perspective, what am I going to do? I'm going to go to a team and help them be an eight seed and get swept in the first round? That's not what he's looking for at this, this point in his career. <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, it's absolutely right. I wouldn't wish Knicks <laughs> on my man Chris Paul. Not at this stage of his career. I mean, come on, man. I mean, you're talking about a vet who's all obviously going to be a Hall of Famer. A team that's on a rebuild, guy looking to, you know, secure his legacy even more by winning a championship. Terrible fit, just like Amin said. Well, I think I think ultimately, you know, you can't try to go big game hunting all the time. You may plan for 2021 and think, you know, I got this money and we're gonna go, but that doesn't mean you're gonna get the guys. I went through it. Mm -hmm. And so I think the Knicks have to be open to a lot of different things. Would he be a great fit for them? Absolutely. I think he would fit those kids. Mitchell Robinson going to the rim. They get a spa you know, some more spacing and some shooting. Absolutely he would fit. The big stage, he doesn't get sick. But for him and where he's at in his career, I'm just not sure that that's a good fit for him and what he's trying to do, which is win big. Having been through it, yeah. having been trying to get big free agents to come and have them not land, do you think, Fizz, that the Knicks should change their mindset a little bit and operate almost more, I don't want to say a small market team, but a team that isn't expecting to get a lot of free agents, so they do have to acquire big name players through trades like this? Well, I do. Th I just think you got to be, you know, meticulous about building your team mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. not think that you're just going to land this big shark all the time. And so if you can acquire winning pieces along the way mm -hmm. that fit into your the mentality you're trying to build into your team the type of guys you're trying to build into bring into your culture you snatch them up when you can and if a big fish is out there yeah you take them but that shouldn't knock you off of what you're trying to do or if you see opportunities to improve your team along the way till 2021 you should take those opportunities. Well, I mean, certainly we saw what Chris Paul can do with young players oh. the way he mentored those guys in Oklahoma City. I mean, but one one thing, players, one thing, not Rachel. New, not the New York players. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, it's you got to have a plan. I think you got to have a I plan. Actually, I think <laughs> that I disagree with him because I think his position. You coach those players. Well, his position fits the young players that they have. Right. Mitchell Robinson needs a Chris Paul. R.J. Yes. Barrett needs a Chris Paul. Kevin Knox needs a Chris Paul. And so, you know, because of the position placement, that's mm -hmm. why I say. He could end up, especially in the East, in the bottom of that East, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. He could squeak them in probably if they add a couple of little things here and there. But for him, I just don't think it's the right move uh, for what he's trying to get out of his career. All right. Well, this group could definitely have this conversation for the entire rest of the show. We're not going to do that. I'm going to move on. The next trade destination possibility, the Milwaukee Bucks, to help you imagine that at home. Ooh. Here's what it would look like. That, Chris looks, looks snappy there. Tim Bontops again with a potential trade. Chris Paul for Eric Bledsoe, Irsan Ir Ilyasova, whose contract has to be guaranteed, Robin Lopez, whose option would have to be picked up, and DJ Wilson to make the salaries match. So, I mean, what do you think about CP3's potential fit with the Bucks? I think it was a, a much better fit. You know, they have a need for someone who can create offense not only for himself but for others. 
Uh, I think Giannis in the playoffs, we've seen the offense get stagnant and it's harder for him to get the buckets that he's accustomed to getting. I think Chris Paul helps with that. I think him being a strong voice and a leader on the court is important for them as well. Look, for every single one of these scenarios, we're going to have a conversation about his age and his contract. Right. But if you're Milwaukee, here's the deal. You want to demonstrate to Giannis Antetokounmpo that we do whatever it takes to get a championship. And so that even means inheriting a contract that really doesn't look great from our book's perspective, but it helps our chances to get you over the hump. And much like I think about Oklahoma City a few years ago, trading for Paul George and uh, Carmelo Anthony, even though those guys weren't the best fit, what it did was it demonstrated to Russell Westbrook, oh, mm -hmm. we're all in here in OKC. Mm -hmm. I'll sign that extension. And really, mission accomplished from that standpoint. Yeah. What do you think of the fit, Miz? I think it's a great fit. I mean, he, he checks three boxes for Milwaukee. Playmaking, what they, which they desperately needed because Giannis did most of the playmaking for the other guys. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Uh, and then you got a closer. People forget, Chris Paul was one of the best fourth quarter players in, the best clutch in, the player. Leaguer, yeah. in the league last year and, and in his career. And that's something we didn't see from this ball club in Milwaukee. So he checks those three boxes for me, and he puts them back in champ uh, serious championship contention. Not that they weren't last year, but, you know, a lot of people had them getting upset, when, which they did. But you put Chris Paul in that team, I like them coming out of the East. And, and I thought it really hurt them not to have Malcolm Brogdon. I really thought mm. you saw in the playoffs Great. where that playmaking was missing. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, Chris Paul is one of the best to ever do it at that position. And he is a win-now guard. You're talking about Silas being in a win-now situation. That's a win-now decision if mm -hmm. you bring him in. And the fact that you don't have to lose Middleton in all of that means that that's a great move for them and for Chris Paul wanting to win right now. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.